Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video here on Variety and Errors. I thought with all the craziness going on, it's time to jump right back in to a bill search of pocket money, see if we find anything worth more than face value, or is at least collectible. Uh, aside from that, let's get jumping into it. Series 2017 $20 note. Nothing really crazy jumping out as far as misprints. Uh, fancy serial numbers, anything with the seals or anything with the actual tones of the bill. Uh, no print shifts or anything like that. Back of the note. And nothing really. Now, when you notice these things that look kind of like fingerprints across the bill here and here and across the uh, annotation of $20, that's generally going to be a wet ink transfer from another $20 note that sat below this one. I don't see anything else on that note. Ah, oh, man, almost a fancy serial number. What type of serial number, you might ask? Great question. Now, with this repetition on the series 2013 uh, $20 note, uh, 443, 443. This seven throws it off, but I wish we would have had 44 on the end here. It would have been a great repeater note as well as a radar note that's able to be read from forwards to backwards, being a 443, 443, 44. But hey, somebody else got really lucky. Hopefully, they're a collector and they put it in their collection or spun it around and sold it for some profit. Repeater and radar notes can definitely command a few bucks over face val value, turning this uh, between 20 bucks and 40 bucks. Now, uh, the bug in his hair is just a little bit of ink here. Not something that came from production. It's not the same tone, so that's something to keep an eye out for, however. Really beat up on the back, though. Uh, folded multiple times. Somebody uh, folded this up and probably shoved it in their pocket, but... Not close enough for me to hold on to, but something to keep an eye out for. Uh, another good mix of numbers here. If we would have moved things around, we might have had something, but nothing in the serial number on this 2013 note. Nothing different about both those 20s and these $1 Federal Reserve notes uh, in quite some time. The 20s were redesigned in the early 2000s. $1 notes have not gone through a redesign in uh, close to 70 years at this point. Uh, so, nothing to talk about graphically. And the $20 notes, along with other denominations like the 5, the 10s, and the 50s and 100s, all went through anti-counterfeiting redesigns uh, to try to fight just that. Nothing on the back. And nothing in the serial number on this guy. Of course, keep an eye out for other forms of fancy serial numbers, ladders, broken ladders, so on and so forth. Nah, really wrinkly. It's definitely been wet at one point. Eh, nothing in the serial number. They're only a little bit away from a broken ladder, but hey, you're always a little bit away from something when it comes to <laughs> searching for fancy serial numbers. So, you know, I could say that probably all day with every bill. Oh man, I was 17 digits away from having something. Another question I get a lot, uh, both on the Facebook page as well as on the website in the comments and stuff, is... This is not really a good example, but for date notes, just rule of thumb, month, day, and then the year. If it's in any other order, sure, keep a hold of it if that's something that you want to collect. But as far as a resale value or a trade or collectible value, um, collectors in general, resellers in general are going to want that month, day, year format in the serial number, so a two-month day, two-month year, four-digit four, uh, year. Nothing there on that $10 bill. And good clump of eights there in the middle, but nothing going on on the sides here. Little bit of issue with print around series 2013, right on the R there. Let's get really close to the camera here. So you can see there's kind of some bleed over from that R into the I there. That's something to keep an eye out for, but since it is still able to be uh, read pretty easily, I would say uh, not collectible or an error. And nothing on the back. Little bit of wedding transfer here, just like I kind of mentioned earlier, uh, but not enough and not dramatic enough for me to hold on to. 
2013 series notes. I already touched on the graphics portion of this. I've already touched on the fact that it hasn't uh, changed in quite some time, uh, other than the signatures that are at the bottom of the note. Very close to a broken ladder. This is a great example. Uh, I wish it was a broken ladder, but if we would have had a three on either one of these zeros, we would have had one, two, three, four, five, six, se or sorry, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that would have been a broken ladder. So this is just kind of a something that could have been. But broken ladders are really sought after. Ladders, of course, are even more so uh, amongst many other types of fancy serial numbers. Just check out our website, varietyairs.com. Up in the top, you can either click on it or search in the search bar for fancy serial numbers. And we have a ton of info on all the different ones to look for. And nothing on the back there. Also folded up and pretty beat up. Another $1 note, 2013 series, probably the most common you'll come across. And then here in a little while, over the next uh, year or so, we'll see 2017 most commonly, I would assume, as uh, history tends to show. Once again, we are close to a broken ladder in this one, too. So, I mean, if we would have had a couple digits different, like I said earlier, you could say that about a lot of them, then we would have had a little something. But keep an eye out for ladders and broken ladders. A uh, little bit of ink smear here, same deal, this thing that looks like a fingerprint is actually just a either a wet ink transfer or excessive kind of inking of the front of his jacket there on Washington. Other things is going to be issues around the Roman numerals at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, issues around this seal, issues around these little accent marks that run uh, the outside or perimeter of the seal, so that's other things to keep an eye out for. Good repetition of threes on this series 2009 $1 note. As you can see, graphics are the same. Little bit of a shift in the seal up and to the left. Uh, but since this thing is so beat up, even if it was a major error or print issue or anything like that, just like any other collectible, that's going to detract from value uh, over face value of $1. But in this case, it's just worth a buck. Grab myself a coffee on the way to work. 2013 series note, um, nothing really crazy going on in this. You can see there's quite a bit of damage. We almost got a one-eyed Washington here. And nothing on the front. And nothing really jumping out on the back. Little bit of damage here. Initially, I was like, ooh, there's an ink issue. But in case it's not. Uh, a little bit of a funky print on that six. Now, 2013 series is very common to have an over ink, but generally it sits on the third digit from the left, as you can see on this three over here. Uh, but in this case, it's a little bit of extra something, something going on as far as ink on this six, and it's sitting a little high. Um, but it's not dramatic enough for me to say, hey, that's going to be worth more than face value. Aside from that, I don't see anything else jumping out at me on the front of that note. Let's look at the reverse. Nice and damaged. Got a little blood or something right there. That's nice. Um, nothing other than that. 2013 series note also, a little bit of shift down. Nothing else really jumping out. I like to look at all the different, uh, the sheet and plate numbers and stuff that are on the bill. Uh, if you have any questions on actual layout of U.S. currency, then just go to our site, varietyairs.com. We have a layout of, uh, I think each denomination now, including coinage. And nothing there. Good repetition of sevens. I would have liked to see twos here. That would have been cool. Seven, two, two, seven, two, two, seven, two. Another great repeater in that case if it was. So if you're out there looking through bills, repeaters, radar notes, um, and of course, birthday notes, date notes, fancy serial numbers of any type are something that you would definitely want to hold on to. They're easy to come across. Um, just by bill searching your pocket change as you get done with your day. Man, we're coming a lot across a lot of good uh, almost radars. I mean, I hate to say almost, uh, but man, we are close to another one here. If we would add a 2 instead of this 9, 9082, 2809, you would have been able to read it forward and backward. So we got a bunch of uh, close calls here. I wish I was saying... Man, I got a bunch of collectible stuff that's worth money. Uh, I know you probably feel the same, but hey, 
you probably know how I feel when you look through bills and you're like, man, I've come across a ton of close finds, but nothing uh, that's going to give me some uh, extra pocket money. So uh, it's kind of a bummer, but still, the fun of the hobby is, you know, I love the thrill of the hunt, both in collectibles, thrift stores, flea markets, and all that stuff. That's how I've come across a lot of my other collectibles, like Star Wars and comic books, video games, and stuff. Um, Thrill of the Hunt's always one of the best things to it. And the greatest thing about this hobby is you end up with the same amount of money you started with. So worst case, we come across nothing, and uh, we still got ourselves some money. A little bit of writing on the front. That's always going to detract from value in the bill, uh, whether it's collectible or not. Writing on the note, um, as far as a uh, numismatic standpoint of collection and stuff, is going to always detract from value. Unless, of course, it's like a autograph, which even in that case still detracts from value, oddly. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. N nothing in the serial number there either. Obviously, some highlighter made its way to the front of this note. Really beat up. Nothing going on there. Last but not least, got ourselves in a little bit of an over ink nine here. We got some good ex little extra inking going on, good wet ink transfer going on in this bill. What is that? We might have ourselves a little something. I think the... I'm looking at this here. It's almost like a drop of ink landed on it. But it's actually got a fiber sitting over top of it. So it's almost as if it's a, it, it is an error. But, you know, you tell me in the comments. It looks a little bit off as far as the shininess to that little drop. Let's try to go really close here. You see that? But as you can tell, it's actually got a little bit of fibers from the paper itself over top of it. Which means it's, it's a portion of the bill as opposed to just being on the bill. That's interesting. I'm going to hold on to this. It's the kind of the last one in the run, so interesting to come across it at the very end. I'm going to hold on to it. I'll look at it closer under a scope and see if that is, in fact, the case that it is in a kind of ink error, ink drop error. I don't know what to call it, uh, but I will take a look at it. I will let you know in the comments below, and I will post an article on VarietyErrors.com outlining what I found. Let me know what you've come across in your bill and coin searches lately in the comments below but like always much love thank you for coming to the video subscribe if you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one peace out